Welcome back. On to the next part. The next part involves changing the direction of the ball chain from vertical to horizontal. And whilst it's changing the direction, it also needs to change it in a top level and a lower level. It also needs to turn a gear to turn the carousel. Now, in the past, I used support shaft that would fit through a hole in the base. You could adjust it before you assembled everything together with a, a spanner, tighten it up at the back, put all the pulleys and gears and bearings on, then put another interesting shaped support which was there to support the top bearing pulley that would send the ball chain back to the drive motor if that makes any sense. Now that worked really well, it was lovely having the offset drive shaft, support shaft, because I could just adjust it just enough so that the gear teeth meshed but not too tightly. So what I want to do, to so cut a really long wittering story short, is to design an alternative way of adjusting this whole pulley system easily. So that if for some reason, in a desert or something, and the baseboard shrunk sufficiently, and let's face it, when you're working in tenths of millimetres accuracy, it wouldn't take much for the ball just to shrink sufficiently for any um, inadequacies or any offsets, unwanted bits to line up, and to then start having an effect. So I want to make it adjustable. Why not just get to the point? drew the screw in the wrong place, the centre was there and then it would move round. But like I say, that meant you had to take everything off because there's such a little gap between the gear and the base. You couldn't get a spanner in there. And I've been thinking about alternatives. I draw a disc, I cut a disc of 10mm acrylic out and then put a screw, a simple brass shaft like that, possibly with a hole in the top to screw it all together. Then, in the base, I cut out, drill, a hole that's really, oh, not there, that fits into, so that goes in like that. That means that this will hold that really rigid, and then on the back, if I have this glued to a piece of, say, 3mm, because I think I've got the gap about 6mm between the back of the base and the outer back of the mouldings around the edge. Then I could theoretically cut two slots or even three, push the boat out like that. That will then screw up underneath. That means that without having to take anything to pieces from the back, you can loosen two screws, twist it round a little bit and get it in place. Now I'm just thinking about this, rather than having a 6mm shaft, support shaft for the bearings, which I haven't got any brass in 6mm diameter, and I don't want to have to turn down an 8mm diameter, I was thinking, you don't see it, why not use an M6 screw? It fits through the bearings perfectly. I thought the best way to anchor that, to get it vertically standing out of this 10mm um, disc, is to tap it. Now, because I've got three taps I knew the sizes of and the rest, I found a nut that fits onto this M6 screw, and then going through my box of bits, a little, not a very good top tip, but if you want to find the right tap and you can't read what the writing says on it, put a nut, use a nut, there we are, and that fits on there, so I know that is M6, so I can tap it. Now I'm going to look up in this lovely book, leaflet someone gave me a long time ago core pitch depth for what drill oh five okay exciting there's the 10 millimeter version there's the m5 hole ready to tap out to m6 for the bolt three small m3 uh, three millimeter diameter holes for some small screws to hold the two all the bits together and then because that's 10 millimeters thick and the ply is 12 I've cut a, another bit from 2mm. Version 2. Managed to get it together and I've tapped the holes for the M3 screws. Um, Count sunk it. You start to get the idea of what this is all about. So this goes in from the front side, pushes in, 
Um, that then supports the bearings and the pulleys need a spacer or something on it but that's okay, that's fine. And then on the back this screws with the three M3 screws into the eels and then allows you to adjust it. Version 3, slightly smaller 10mm bit, other slight changes to those and another version of this bit. I have to say, this is starting to get on my thrupnies. Uh, this is now version 4. I just wasn't happy because having built the last one, um, it was all cracking and it was too near the edge and it was swelled, swelled, swelled up and was too tight to fit in the hole again. Oh, a load of faff. So, version 4. It may seem like I'm doing exactly the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Um, possibly I am. 30 millimeters. Lucky I've got a 30 millimeter Forstner bit. Moved up to 30. So, and this is already working better. I am not tapping the little two bits of uh, two pieces of two millimeter millimeter acrylic. Before I did anything else, I got the 10 mil acrylic, tapped it. M6, M3 times three. Finally, so exciting. Can you imagine something and you know it's got to be possible and it takes you hours and hours and hours. But here we have it. I've added some brass washers, M3 brass washers, because this is slightly over 12mm. But give me a moment, I think I've solved that problem as well. So this is what you see from the front that will be hidden by the gears. This is what you see from the back. As always, I've cut these gears with a 12mm hole in the middle and the bearing is 13mm diameter. The reason for that being that, as I've been wittering on about, the cuts on a laser cutter aren't quite perpendicular. Very luckily, and with no foresight on my behalf, all these gears that I've used are divisible by three, the number of teeth, which means that the jaws on the chuck can grip them perfectly which means in turn I can then drill out the center so it has perpendicular size to support the bearing and there you have it the floof the next job is to stick these three gears together right makes me quite nervous. So I've got the, the middle sized one in here, here's the smaller one and here's a jig of salts. It's basically turned down exactly to 13 millimeters. Now if I grip that in the chuck like so and tighten it theoretically, very theoretically, if I put glue on here and then bring this up against that one, that should be perfectly centred. Shall we try it, dear friends? Let's, with a certain degree of abject terror. So, get here, I will put some super glue around here. I've roughed up the surfaces to make sure they adhere properly and are completely flat. I'll then rest that on there and then without, well possibly spinning it, oh, I don't know, it's not even moving. <sighs> there. After yesterday's failed attempt to glue these gears together I thought I'd make turn up a sort of little jig, 13mm on the outside diameter, 9 on the inside. As the drawings on the computer for the gears, the three gears, said that the middle one needed to be drilled out to 9. So, I dutifully drilled them out to 9.5 because I picked up the wrong drill bit. So I cut out two more and got the lathe set up with a 9mm drill only to find that these holes cut by the laser cutter are bigger than 9. Heavens to Betsy, I've finally got two sets properly made, sanded roughly so they stick together and with the right size holes. 
There's the jig, there's the 9mm drilled out hole, which I've now corrected on all the drawings, so that's good. That just fits really nice and firmly in there. And the idea is, and I say the idea because the track record like I've got over this wretched sprocket system, I really don't know. A couple of spots of glue under there, and then ease it down and it perfectly lines up. Let's give it a go. You can enjoy the roller coaster ride that is this wretched sprocket. Where's a bit of fluff? It's just everything to do with this. It's unbelievable. I don't think. Oh, see, it's gone. Right, I'm going to drip a few drips. Oh, where are we? Just some drips around possibly five. I don't want so much that it then glues itself to the jig which could be a, a real possibility right let's, we got that and then we do that Ooh. well fingers crossed that's it mm, jigs right you can see there's a hole for a bearing there one of those and a hole for the bearing in the top. I've just got to finish by sticking this on the very top because that acts as the guide to stop the ball chain from skipping off the pulley. Brilliant! I need to make a jig now because further on from this version 4, or version 5, I don't want to have these M3 screws. They're not necessary. They're a pain to have to tap out and everything else. Um, and I need them because I can just glue the back on. That big surface with super glue would be quite adequate. Here's the one I prepared earlier, the original cutout. Now I'm going to delete all of the inner bits because I don't want any of that. And I'm going to use the original one to get the jig lined up, get rid of all that, and then because if I cut this it's going to be a quarter of a millimetre too big so what I'll do is, if I can, with this strange software that came with the laser cutter go to that, go to that line I want inner and I think I'll try it 0.1 and then try that, what does that do? Aha! We've got the 30mm hole I cut out that bit that you saw earlier that was 0.1mm one millim one millimeter smaller. What I'm going to do is to put this, the actual piece I want, in the back of it and sit it flat. And then what I'll do, my super glue's nearly run out, mind, so I can get some. Well, I'm going to put plenty on, and then all I have to do. Is lower it into the hole. What's that? Hang on. Oh, that's it. Phew. God, Bennett. I don't want to waste any more bits. And push it down. That then ensures, I think, I think I've got this right. Yes, I have, because the way I did it, set it up, was to um, stick the jig together using this original one, so I know that's, yeah, that's right. Phew. I do start wondering. And then, there you have it. And with my recent track record of mucking things up, missing the point completely, I need to work out where I need to drill the hole, 30mm hole, so that I can then get this in the right place and a little bit of leeway either side so it'll adjust properly. Some might say that dust extraction would have been a good idea. But some might have more than two arms. Hmm. So now this goes through from the back. Quite sure how I'm going to manage this. And then that goes on there. And then, look at that. Brilliant. I didn't check whether that lined up actually. But, and then if I twist it, you can see it moves right away. I don't know whether you can see. Yes, you can see. Right away, and then as I twist it round, it then goes really stiff. I think it started off somewhere down here-ish. Now that 
is brilliant. It also overhangs this, because that's three and this is five, so it overhangs a millimetre above, millimetre below. I am so pleased about that. Here's the view from the back, and then I can just adjust it, rotate it, and then just tighten these three screws. It'll hold it in the right place, and now you can see that without having to touch the front, if I loosen those, I can adjust it again, which is exactly what I wanted. I do apologise profusely. I've just noticed the state of my fingernails, which I've promptly cut. I didn't notice them. I've been so busy doing this that personal hygiene has had to take a second seat. Although I hasten to add, I still do bathe regularly and have clean clothes every day. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm working on the sort of the, the chain path. So what I'm going to do next is to make the chime thing, I think. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you next time when I'm going to try and build the chime mechanism. Fabulous. Remember that these two climatic revelators will be for sale once they're completed. Links in the description. Thanks very much for watching.